Hi friends, welcome back for another Trinity Stamps video. This is Cassie. Today we're going to be making some watercolored tags and I am going to be using the brand new Bloom and Grow stamp and die. That little gnome is too stinking cute. We have our matching dies and we also have the slimline tags dies. Um, so I've got some mixed media paper in here and we're basically watercolor paper. I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool, ink up my image with some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, which is a pigment ink. Stamp that down. I want to make sure that's a couple times since this is watercolor cardstock. I, um, it's a little bit textured, so I just need to make sure that that is stamped well. And then I'm going to cover that with some clear embossing powder. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I'm doing that later. Uh, but then I'm just going to heat set that till that is smooth and melted. And I'm going to stamp it twice because I figure if I'm making one tag, I might as well make another. So now we're going to get started with our coloring. I have sped this up about four times since we're coloring two images. Um, and, you know, it's you would be here all day if I hadn't done this. So I've chosen some colors that are a little bit more subdued, more earthy in my tone, in my opinion. And so I'm just going to start putting that color down. And the way watercolor works is you work in layers. So um, I'm waiting for each little section to dry, which is why I'm moving over to the other side. And then as that dries a little bit, which I kind of didn't want his cheeks to dry because I wanted to be able to put that little bit of pink in there and let the water do its thing. Um, but the reason I embossed this, which you wouldn't have to do, but the reason I embossed this is because I like to color things that are right next to each other. And typically when you're using watercolor, you would have to maybe move from one section to the next section, um, not close by because that stays wet. And if you're grabbing color and putting that down right next to something that's already wet, it's going to drag that color into what you just painted. And so then you end up with maybe some blending that you weren't looking forward to. <laughs> so this is why I like to emboss it. It just kind of lets me be a little bit lazy <laughs> and just work wherever I want to work. The embossing basically gives it a little well and it keeps the water from going over to the next section. All right, so we're just gonna grab colors. I didn't really have any particular color scheme in mind for this one just grabbed out colors that I thought would be pretty and I liked the earthy idea so we've got some yellows some dark pinks we've got that almost like a gray blue for his hat and for the pot and I don't think I mentioned it but the watercolors that I'm using are just some Daniel Smith watercolors that I have any watercolors would work but this is this is one of the palettes that I have in my stash and uh, so I just picked out some earthy tones for this one. Eventually, I am gonna bring in some metallic paints because I want some shiny in there, but uh, until we get to that point, we're just gonna start, or continue to put down this color. So we've got that nice deep green, and then we'll bring in a little bit more yellow for this flower. Um, and then we're gonna drag the colors that we've kind of already used down into the rest of like the finishing. So you'll notice on that darling little watering can, there's some scallops and some lines. So we'll take some of the colors that we've already used and we'll color that portion with it. So we'll just add some gray for the rocks and then we'll go in and for those lines we're gonna use, well, we'll color his beard first. <laughs> and I'm just slapping down a tiny bit of gray and then dragging that up. And then here's where I bring in some of that blue. And then I'll bring in um, some of that pink for the scallop. And here's where I decide to bring in my metallic watercolors. I want to color that watering can with some metallic, like a silver, basically. So that way it'll be nice and shiny. And so I'm putting down one little wash. You can't tell here that it is metallic, but I'll hold it up to the light when we're done. And then you can really see it shine. It's just so fun to add some of those little, little extras. I could have very easily just stuck with a regular gray and that would have been fine. Um, but this, this is one way to add a little bit of shine. All right, so let me hold that up for you and you can see the sparkle. I love that. 
looks good. So now we're going to bring in our matching dies and we're going to tack that down with a little bit of mint tape and run that through our die cutting machine. You'll notice I also have out that slimline tags die. So I've die cut a couple of those just in the size that would work well with our little gnomes. And now I'm going to bring in those watercolors again and color the background. I want it to look sort of like a scene, but this is a sloppy, easy scene to do. So I'm just basically slapping down some of that green, dragging it up. And I'll add some more here just to get it a little bit darker. Once again, drag that color up. So it looks like there's some grass. And then for that same, um, for the color that I used for his hat and just other areas that like blue gray, I'm going to use that for the clouds. I spritzed a little bit of water on there and I'm going to pounce that color around, trying to leave a lot of white space to make it look like there's actual clouds behind there. But by putting down that water first, it allows that paint to just move a little bit freer. So I'm not going to go too crazy, just add a little bit here and there. And then make sure that this is nice and dry. And then we, uh, I decided I wanted to bring in that little reinforcer that comes in the slimline tags die. So I'm going to put down some paint on some of the scrap watercolor cardstock that I had and I'm going to end up die cutting that little uh, reinforcer. It's, it's not necessary to add the reinforcer, but it's just, it kind of gives it this little finishing touch, which is nice. Um, since this is watercolor cardstock, it's nice and you know, thick. But you do want to make sure that this is nice and dry before you run this through your die cutting machine, otherwise you'll just tear the paper. So I've die cut that twice, and now I'm going to stamp out my sentiment a couple of times using the same VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And it just says, just for you. And there is a matching die that will cut out our sentiment. And I love that. So I'll run that through my die cutting machine a couple of times. Make sure I have those cut out. And then we can ad adhere down our little reinforcer. Like I said, it's just like a little finishing touch. It's so fun to add that. Make it look like um, one of those tags that you would purchase. But we made it. And I love that. And then I'll glue down our sentiment just using some more of that liquid glue. But to attach down our, our little gnomes, we are going to bring in some foam squares. So I'll put that all over the back of both of those, peel off that release paper and stick those down. And then I have some twine. Since I used such earthy colors, I thought the twine would be perfect. So I'm just gonna cut a couple of pieces of twine and then I'm gonna fold those in half, stick that through the hole through the back and then loop it through and then tie a knot at the top for both of them. And then our tags are done. So these tags would be great to add to a card if you wanted, or you could add it to a bag. They're, they're just great for that. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And as always, I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.